um, there, there's a misconception around the whole custom packaging thing where a lot of the people ask me this, they, they're thinking that you get the custom boxes and packaging from the same supplier that you get your products from, which is not the case. So most of the time with private label, you're working with a lot of different third parties, okay? You get your products, if you have multiple, it could be from different suppliers. Okay, you're getting those and you're ordering them in bulk, right? It's not job shipping where you get one um, or you just never even touch it, right? So you're ordering a bunch in bulk, okay, at discount, right? So you get cheaper products. That's where the margins and stuff come in, but you're doing that. And then you have to design your own packages and work with packaging companies, all right, to get your boxes ordered to you. And now if you're like a one-man show, which is what I was when I first started, guys, then you're gonna be getting the product and the packages to your house and you're gonna have to package them up to your, at, like up yourself, right? So so you have that brand um, inclusiveness in in your um, in your company, right? Um, without using like a third party like pick and pack and something like that, where you're just shipping all that to someone else who's doing it for you. Most most people like me, I couldn't afford that uh, when I first started because they they take you know, a relatively large cut. That is just one of the misconceptions about that, and then we'll just kind of get into just the whole design aspect and whatnot um, when we get the boxes. There's a few I can talk about. Let me just get them all. Okay. Then I actually want to talk about this other private label brand that I completely failed at, but the the branding side of it was good. So I want you guys to be able to like learn something from that. All right, guys. So this first box uh, was from my first dropshipping store. So again, guys, if you if you've been around, um, you know. And I just want to break it down actually more for you guys. So. This was the main thing, all right, the nugget was the name. On the side, we had which more branding, thenugget.com, okay. Um, on this side, we had also thenugget.com. Um, you're a curator of luxury goods. So again, guys, with the whole nugget, what I was dropshipping, right, I wouldn't even advertise that the products were mine because I was dropshipping. I couldn't get my logo on a lot of these products that I was dropshipping. So I just branded it as, hey, we're just curating. <coughs> I'm so sick. Uh, we're just curating these goods for you guys and listing them on our website. So again, so that's that's how I could kind of get away with products without logos on them, like without our branded logo on them, was by just saying, hey, we're just curating these goods for you guys, okay? Um, and so that was that. And then if we open it up, actually, and then this is our hashtag that we told people, um, just hashtag welcome to the gold mine. Because um, again, guys, with the whole branding, we wanted a theme. So like the nugget, it's, it's in a way, it's like, it's like a golden nugget, right? And so when they visit our site, it's like, hey, you're in the gold mine. So hashtag welcome to the gold mine. And then... <laughs> We have a, uh, there's old iPods here before my e-com days when I was trying to get that passive lifestyle. Now, um, so we have the welcome to the gold mine and then this is the actual box. We have social media here. So at the nugget shop, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Now, if I can actually take this apart just to kind of show you guys kind of how packaging comes um, when you order a bunch from suppliers and have to do it yourself. Oh yeah, so when we ordered these from from our supplier, right, it comes just flat like this, right? So there's literally like, imagine like 500 of these just laying flat like this. I, I had to fold them all myself, I had to set them up myself. And then in terms of actually getting it customized, right, um, I'll show you guys on the on the computer later, say when I get back um, to my apartment, but it's, it's, it's really just, it, it's a pretty simple process. So you're using Photoshop and you're just gonna outline this. So the supplier will usually give you templates of their boxes. It'll look like something like this, except just in an online document shape. And it'll tell you like where the inside front is or where the front is, you know, on the back and how they're kind of folded. And then it's just your job of testing it, getting samples to make sure you, you know, you, you put stuff upside down where it's supposed to be upside down um, and stuff like that to actually get the box looking like, you know, how it is. So this, this was the outside box, right? Again, that was my first drop shipping store. Um, when we started moving in towards actually having, you know, our own products and um, like hosting products. Um, without just drop shipping. So that's when we started moving towards special packaging. With this one, guys, so this one was, uh, so this, this this brand was called New Planet. I'll pull up the socials in a second too, just so I can show you guys this company. But this one uh, this one also fails, like you know, I failed I failed a lot. So but this was this is a packaging insert, okay? So what I mean by that is they open a box from you, right? So imagine they open this box um, with the brace that they ordered. You usually have some sort of insert in here as well, okay? And this one was just for New Planet. They go on the back. All right, hey, thank you for your purchase. We hope you enjoy the bracelet. Again, guys, I got started in the fashion industry, guys. I've been around for a while now, okay? So I know what I'm talking about in terms of just fashion. Um, and then this was just, hey, follow us. Use hashtag to get them reposted. So again, it's, 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 it's for those of you who are familiar with Luke's, um, the Luke's app on Shopify, you know, getting reviews and getting other people to post them, right? We didn't have that back at the time when I was doing this. So I literally, people that purchased, I had an insert. I told them, hey, take a picture, tag us with this hashtag, um, and then we'll feature you, right? So stuff like that, just so I could get more people and show other people, like prospective clients, hey, you know, this is, this is these, these are what our customers look like and this is them wearing it, okay? So you usually have an insert in here as well. And again, all these come from different companies, okay? So this box, 
box will usually come from a different company. This box will come from a different company. Most of the time, you you can get the same leather pouch um, with the same supplier, if, especially if they're doing this sort of design. Um, which again, I designed this myself too. I wanted a matte, uh, matte black box with glossy matte um, embossed here. And then that was just our three bar logo um, on the back with the pull out tab. And then same, same thing to do with the leather pouch, right? So again, I designed all that myself. Again, Photoshop, guys, if you're not familiar with that, um, it's super easy. I'll, again, I'll show you on the computer when we get back. But this comes from a separate supplier. This comes from a separate supplier. And the insert usually comes from a separate supplier. So with private label, guys, again, it takes a little bit more capital. And you're also, like, you're working with a lot of different, like, gears moving at once. So you're working with all these different third-party suppliers to actually start, you know, bringing everything together and then releasing it, you know, out of your own store, like, as, as one whole unit, if that, if that sort of makes sense. So it's a little bit more work, more time-intensive especially when you get started and then one one last thing to note at least for, for the products and stuff like that when when customers order from this one uh, new planet um, we actually wrote handwritten letters for these one because we were trying to do um uh, so what what new planet was was a custom bracelet um, company right and we sold basically anchor bracelets if you guys aren't familiar with that um, it's just a little wrap around with like an anchor that you just loop the uh, the the strap around to so just hold around your, your bracelet okay or your <laughs> your your wrist um, and we sold you know custom um, you got an eight, <coughs> 18 <coughs> 18, 18 karat gold plated we had gold plated we had rose gold all this kind of stuff so we, we were more high-end stuff so we would actually take the time and actually write out a handwritten letter to each customer um, and then include that in the packaging box that they actually receive so we we're again we we're just trying to go the extra mile build more brand customer loyalty um, and just just have a, have a stronger brand presence online um, by kind of doing that so those three things guys um, again all come from different suppliers now I think we're just gonna take some of this back with me in case I ever need to like utilize this stuff again um, for future videos but then we're gonna head back to the apartment and I'm gonna hop on the computer and kind of show you guys the, the logistical side and the actual design side um, of it so you guys kind of get an idea of what you guys got to do so let's head back all right guys oh let it focus I tried to film a cool transition when I got to my uh, back to my place but Failed miserably, but I want to talk about the technical aspects, right? Of like, how do you actually go and find the right supplier? How do you tell the supplier what you want on your packaging? How to actually get the custom packaging to your house, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to hop on the computer now, um, so I can walk you guys through some of the more technical aspects of it, and you know, show you guys how to actually get this get this done. Because I know a lot of you guys are interested in that, and um, I want to help you guys make that happen. All right, so that's what we're going to do real quick here. All right, guys, so I'm small. We're in the laptop. Um, we're on Alibaba, right? So this is where I source most of, or basically all, all, all my um, packaging suppliers, right? So, and excuse me if my voice sounds bad. There's like fires here in Washington and everyone's voice is kind of fucked up right now. But um, with this, guys, so again, there's nothing, there's, it's not like rocket science or anything like that, right? So obviously, if you're doing private label, it means you, you should be going in you know, already knowing that your product will at least sell. Um, just because it does take more capital, you are ordering inventory, you are doing all this custom packaging, custom inserts, all that kind of stuff, right? So you want to actually hop in knowing that you can sell. And what does that mean? Well, it means that there's probably competitors um, selling similar products, right? Or it's like in the same industry, okay? Now you can look at them and see what kind of packaging they're doing, right? Even if like if they are even doing custom packaging, okay? Just to get some inspiration of what your potential um, product package could look like. Um, when you're, you know, when, when you actually, you know, um, get to the end result, right? So again, with Alibaba, right? So I'm gonna hop here on the screen, and you're gonna go into, you know, search like product packaging. Um, obviously, with me and what I did with Three Bar is I typed in, you know, uh, luxury just because I wanted that luxury vibe. Obviously, with most of these boxes, um, the colors, all that kind of stuff can change, right? So when you're looking at all these kind of boxes that these suppliers are showcasing. Um, one, you gotta realize each supplier, like they have a bunch of other boxes, right? So really you're kind of just looking for the, the, the overall shape um, that each box is, right? So the shape, the appearance, um, the delivery. So, you know, how does the actual customer, how does the end client um, interact with that packaging, okay? And like, how do you actually want them to interact with that packaging, right? So, cause, so some of these packages, they're made for certain products, right? So some are made for like eyeshadow, some are made for makeup, like they're just, more keen towards that specific product now. Um, if I was doing bracelets, right, you can you could theoretically stick a bracelet in any of those boxes, right? So again, it's just how you want that delivered, um, how you want that experience to the client, right? Colors, all that kind of stuff is changeable, right? So again, this this thing like this ribbon, like I, I don't like that, right? But the overall box, the shape, how it is, like that that might be something you want, right? So then once you find you know um, a supplier, for instance, right? So let's just do uh, so this is eyelash packaging, right? So um, let's find just any sort of box like this, this one for example. Um, this one says watch box. So, okay, so we'll go here, um, you know, scroll through some of these pictures once this loads. Um, 
and, and you'll see it, it's kind of it's it's one of those like it's sort of like that magnetic um, thing where it, it, it clasps down and they open it all the way up and then boom there's there's a box with like that looks like a watch holder right so again the, the foam inside that box changeable you can cut it up like the supplier can change that for you right so again that can theoretically hold anything right so you're looking for the overall design and the experience that the customer is going to have okay now once you have that in mind right you're, you're going to end up contacting them but first you actually need to like have a design or have some sort of mock-ups ready right now how do you go about doing that how do you go about finding that so what you're going to do right um i went to this website just as an example for you guys like personally when i first started i used photoshop on myself um if you don't have a like a template right a product template of a box first of all the suppliers will most likely give you one so the suppliers will have their own templates that look like this okay like it'll look something like this, right? All these dots, these die cuts, stuff like that. So the dotted line shows you what folds, the red line is the actual hard ends, okay? Um, in, in just like this template. So the suppliers, once you reach out, find a box shape, right? If, if you don't need something crazy customer, because you can do that too, it's a little bit more expensive because they actually have to shape it to your specifications instead of using something they already own. Um, but once you find a supplier that has it, you can ask them for the template, okay? Um, and then you'll get something that looks like this, right? And what you're gonna do is, if, if you have experience with Photoshop, guys, um, I mean, you can use any sort of editor, right? Or you can you could literally print this out and draw on it and then send it back to the supplier, okay, if you really don't know how to use Photoshop or some of these um, digital, you know, um, editing software programs, right? So you, you could literally print it out and edit it yourself, but I hopped on Photoshop, okay? And I just pulled up this this template, right? So again, the supplier will give you a template like this, okay? Because they need this to their own specifications to actually, you know, make the box. So they'll give you this, and once you have this piece of paper, right? So this is both the um, the lid and the base of the box, right? So this is just a simple box that just opens up, um, that you just take off, okay? Now, how would you actually go about designing like your logo, okay? So for me personally, right? I know how to use Photoshop, and I would simply like, for example, if I was, you know, going back to like the three bar, for instance. Um, Something like that, right? Obviously, we have we'd have the name, so like I could say three three bar. Um, all right. So again, this is just a logo that I just slapped on right here in the middle. Now, again, you want to make it very clear that your supplier, like what side this is also this public facing. Is this the inside of the box? Whatever it is, um, whatever you want to do. Um, again, guys, it, it's this simple. It's not like rocket science, okay? So I want you guys to really like it, it's 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 pretty doable. Now you'll have it here, okay? You can put this anywhere. Um, you know, specify if this is on the outside. Like they'll usually tell you, okay, this is the outside of the box. This is you know the the inside, whatever whatever that is, right? Um, and sometimes they'll have special ways to identify if something's on the inside or outside. You kind of like label them differently. But again, if you have this, you can just always tell them and communicate with your supplier, right? Because building good relationships is what you want to do. Uh, you know, communicate with them like, okay, this three bar and co logo, this is on the outside of the box on, you know, on this side, the left side, okay? Now, if you want something, you know, on the inside, you know, maybe maybe for branding or right, something. So maybe on the inside of this this side. So so this side, the bottom, or this I guess would be the, the right or something. Um, you know, you could do hashtag, you know, uh, three bar. Okay, for instance, right? Just just for example. Um, again, just just for some branding, um, and then. How, how just have something on the inside, right? Because again, just the more the more like custom you can kind of make it without you know spending spending a lot. Because again, you can you could basically add as much as you want, add as much text as you want to this stuff, um, and it doesn't really up the cost um, for for you, right? So again, you can have this specified on the inside. Blah, blah blah. Once you have something like this, you'll just send it back to them, communicate with them, right? I make sure you want this on this. Like I want this on the outside. Make sure this is on the inside. I want this you know to be this color. I want this to be like a gloss finish, a matte finish. Uh, it's just a matter of communicating with them, right? Because again, you already, so you're talking with a supplier who's purely for packaging, right? So this isn't your product supplier. This isn't your custom, you know, insert supplier. A lot of these packaging suppliers can do custom inserts, so that's nice too if, if you find one that can do that. Um, but again, it's just communication, right? So you have this down, um, you send it to them, and again, you need to order samples, right? Don't order a big batch of inventory before you even ordered a sample, right? Because my first time ordering it, I messed up, right? One of one of these one of these things was completely upside down, right? Because they're doing it to the specifications of the document that you give them and what you sort of tell them, right? Um, I didn't know that it was upside down, right? So they just did it because they thought that's what I wanted, right? So make sure you order samples, guys. It's fairly cheap. It's a cardboard box. Um, and and you know make sure that everything is is according to your specs. So make sure the finish is right. Make sure the quality and build quality is decent. Um, you know it doesn't have to be like spectacular or anything like that. Um, just make sure that like you know there's no like really really um, you know outlying sort of like dings and dents and whatnot. Um, and make sure you just you know order packaging, um, like or like order order a sample. Okay, so you actually know what you're doing. You make sure that the entire you know 
experience, right? So you, like when you get the packaging and once you assemble the box, right? Because again, it'll become in like a, just a flat cardboard layer, right? That you just assemble yourself. Uh, once you assemble it, right? Just make sure like the experience, the overall experience of just like opening the box, what, like what they see when they open it. Okay, do they see your name right off the bat, right? Is it prominently displayed right off the bat? No questions asked. They don't have to question like what box is this? Um, something like that, okay? When they open it, you know, is, is there still branding around? Like, is, is, is there continuity in the brand finish? Like, there's a bunch of things that, that you just wanna make sure that like, like you gotta pretend to be the customer once you assemble the box and open it up for yourself, okay? So that's that's just one thing to keep in note, guys. Um, and that's that's really it, like how, how I got, you know, how, how to get custom packaging. It, it's not rocket science, there's, there's like a few things that you wanna do that I kinda broke down for you guys in this video, right? So you find the supplier, um, that has you know similar box designs again you can do custom designs but again be careful because you know box designs are popular because they don't take up a lot of space okay there's like weird triangle designs all that kind of stuff but it takes up a lot of space and it's not efficient okay um, now the last thing I want to talk about after I switch my batteries because it's about to die alright guys so the last thing I wanted to mention or touch up on um, before I end this video right so oh, two things actually so number one um, shipping and how do you actually get everything to your to, 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 to your house or to your warehouse, whatever it is, right? Um, usually if you're first starting off <clears throat> God <clears throat> damn, okay, if you're first starting off um, I would, I'd assume most of you guys would be shipping it to your house like I was doing right so um, You ship everything to your house the, the big mistake that I made right off the bat right is again I was bootstrapping I was broke I was trying to save money all this kind of stuff yada yada so I chose sea freight for my shipping okay the supplier gave me options there's DHL over the air um, it was like two times more expensive than sea freight though I believe sea freight was I think four hundred dollars for all the boxes again it was like two pallets okay so two like cargo pallets of these boxes um, that I ordered so Basically, um, they I opted for Sea Freight instead of DHL because DHL was going to be around almost a thousand to ship it from China to my house. Um, sea Freight was only three hundred and fifty or something like that. So I chose that one. It had you know a little bit of a longer shipping time. It was like twenty two days because it literally goes on a boat into one of those metal crates across the water and to to the U S. Right where I was shipping it. Um, my big mistake is I didn't realize there was going to be a bunch of other shipping problems. Um, you know, once it got to the U.S., right? So, unlike DHL, where they would have just you know shipped it here, um, you know, from from China, from their warehouse, all the way to you know the nearest place in Washington, right? With Sea Freight, there's only a certain number of ports, okay? And they shipped it to the Los Angeles port, okay, down in California, when I was in Washington, okay? Um, so the second it landed, I got notified via phone and email that I had to arrange transportation. Um, <laughs> I had to arrange transportation for two pallets of boxes um, to be loaded in a semi truck and driven up to Washington, um, which tacked on more money. So there was that issue, and then the issue of the semi truck wouldn't just drop it off at my house. That doesn't—they don't do that. Um, so you had to drop it off at an actual warehouse place. Um, so that was one thing too—is I had to find a warehouse to drop off the semi truck where they could unload the pallets, and then the warehouse also charged me for storage fees and you know, unboxing fees um, for them to like take it out of the semi truck. So what it quickly turned from, like what, it went from a $350 shipping fee to I think after everything, it was almost you know $1,600 that I spent um, just trying to figure everything out. So that was a big mistake. Um, I'd only use DHL now for, and you know, over air shipping. Um, I've never used Sea Freight ever again after that experience. Um, so that's one thing, guys, uh, in terms of just like delivery that you guys should be aware of, that I want you guys to be aware of so you don't mess up like I did and lose more money. Um, now, the next thing um, is like fulfillment, right? So, again, you have your packaging, you have your products, you have your custom inserts. Um, those might be from the packaging company, those could be from a third party company. Um, you have all this stuff, right? And now, what I was doing is it was all coming to my house and I was arranging everything. So, I was putting the products that came from the Chinese guys. Um, like the Chinese suppliers, right, into my custom packaging boxes and adding the inserts in the custom packaging boxes and then boom, done, product ready, okay? Um, most of you guys are gonna be doing that yourself when you first start off if you can't afford, you know, to put, to put it in a fulfillment center, to put it in a warehouse, to put it into a pick and pack center, okay? Now, that's, the last, last thing I wanna talk about is a pick and pack center. What does that mean? Well, literally, a pick and pack center is where you can ship all this stuff related to your brand. You can ship the inserts from your third party directly to the warehouse. You can ship your products directly from the supplier to the warehouse. You can ship your packaging from that supplier to the warehouse. They'll assemble it all, 
arrange it, you know, how it's supposed to be, and then ship it out themselves when you get an order, okay? That's the best thing you can do once you start private leveling, once you have it down, okay? Obviously, I would start, I would start, I highly suggest starting by having everything shipped to yourself, and you doing it yourself so you actually know what needs to be done, what, you know, how, how it is um, to assemble it, and just so you don't waste more money, right? You need to actually start bringing in sales before you start, you know, buying a pick and pack center, especially if you're starting off, if you're new to the industry. Um, so guys, that, that is this video on how to actually get custom packaging. I wanted to add a few extra tidbits of, you know, like the, the whole shipping story, um, so you guys know not to do that. Um, and then pick and pack stuff so you guys know actually like what to do with your product um, once you have it in, in your hands, okay? So that is the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, you know, we, we went out for a bit. We sat down back here um, at, at my apartment so I could talk to you guys about this. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to drop a like. Drop a comment, guys. I respond to everyone's comments. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. I'm trying to do this more like lifestyle kind of stuff instead of always just sitting down at a desk because I hate that. That's not me. Um, and I feel like it's, it's more like in, entertaining and fun as well if I'm kind of moving around um, and doing stuff that you guys get to, get to see. Um, but yeah, guys, so don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. Check the description down below for all the, the fancy stuff. There's, there's free guides, free PDFs. Um, there's website stuff. You guys are doing Shopify. Because again, I always recommend to start drop shipping or print on demand or one of those, stuff, uh, one of those things um, before private label or white label just because you I had, like, it, it, it takes more money to get started with private label, okay? Um, it takes a lot less money to get started with drop shipping which is why I recommend it if you're new to just internet or e-commerce in general um, just so you can actually learn the ropes without losing a lot um, a lot of money so that's the video guys I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one take care and peace